Hello and welcome into the SoRare Data Football Strategy Show. I'm Andrew Laird. You can find me as Lairdinho on SoRare. Joined today by Nepentes, filling in for Hi. PSU fans too. Didn't want to come in today. Um, Nep, thanks for filling in again. Yeah, I didn't even realize it was a strategy show to be fair. So a lot more pressure now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is yeah. a very serious conversation and we have to stay on topic the entire time. No pressure at all. Uh, thank you to everybody for joining us. People were very excited that you were on the show. And I wanted to add to the excitement, so I have a surprise for you. For me? We actually have someone else to join us. Oh, is it Chani? you kidding me? Yes, it's What's up, Chani, man? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> man, it's actually just been gen genuinely a long time since Chani and I have spoke. Since my yeah. Facebook contract expired, and I kind of like took them for a ride for the last three months of that and just sat there chilling and talking to people all day. I, I mean, I've been in your chat. Work. We've we've interacted. Yeah, but we haven't actually we like, haven't talked, seen each you know? other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. yeah, that I was all excited that you were just going to have not that you would have no idea who it is, but the fact that Chani was like the first one. <laughs> and so Chani was supposed to be on our show last week. We had you know things happen, life happens, and yeah. he was like, "Hey, any chance I can come on today?" And I was like, oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how you and Nepper like each other. Like, I don't, I don't think that'll, it'll work. No, <laughs> but seriously, I was like, I would definitely love to have you on. And I was like, I'm not going to tell Nep. It's just going to be like, I'm going to surprise him. And my God, right away. Well, that worked really, out. <laughs> really pleasant surprise. Yeah. It's, it's actually, it's interesting because much like you and I led, Tanya and I share extremely different views on how to play so rare. And it, it's, it's one of the most refreshing things that I've got from Sora in general as well is that there is no right. This is what I said to you the other day, right? Everything is right and everything is wrong and yeah. nothing is right and nothing is wrong. And it's, it's just incredible. Yeah. So I agreed with some of it. I think there is, there is some wrong. I think you can be wrong, <laughs> but there are definitely multiple ways to be right. So, oh, there are probably multiple ways to be wrong also. Uh, I, I do think, that the topic of today's show that we were going to discuss is worth talking about um, because I just think it was really interesting kind of the, how you were looking at it, because I don't necessarily think everyone who heard like, can I plan to win all-star rare kind of saw it the same way, maybe the same thing. There are no right or wrong answers here, but yeah. when, when you said it, were you saying it as, because you said it on your stream and then I referenced it on mine. We didn't actually talk about it together. So no. I'm going to let you defend yourself here. But like, were you saying that you wanted to try to build something that one, wins it once, something that is competitive every week that theoretically could win every week? Like, how did you, what was your thought process when you actually said that? Yeah, like, the, the, like both actually. So like, like my, my, my initial thought was like, like, can you actually win? Like, like, can you, like, it, it was a hypothetical, the title of the stream, like, planning to win All-Star Rare. It was more about, I think, having a strategy, at least having something, some form of planning is really, really, really important in So Rare. And so I thought, can you plan to win All-Star Rare? And, and I think I came to the conclusion, whilst I was kind of just, like, theory crafting in my own head, that you absolutely can't if your goal is to just win all-star rare even one time m maybe one time is easier because you can find all those really obscure midweeks in like two months from now get all the best guys that you think are going to play and like that's your best shot um but I, I think i like kind of developed onto like winning like building a team that has the ability to get 100 percent return on investment i think you can plan for that no problem at all yeah johnny you i was going to say we were going to take last week to just berate you for taking the summer off. Yeah. But it seems <laughs> like there is strategy in this. Obviously, it's not, you're not like, oh, I'm just gonna take a break. Like you're using yeah. kind of uh, resources that you would have used in the summer for the for the next European season, not even just like ETH, but time and scouting yeah. and all of that yeah. stuff. <clears throat> and you actually made a comment um, in one of the 75 discords I'm in that you're also in, but it was something along the lines of, um, I think it was during our some show we did about the summer where you were like, you don't want to spread yourself too wide in the summer. You really want to like focus on quality and like work from there. And I was like, yeah, that's really smart. He should do that. And then you were like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm not playing in the summer. 
And I was like, no, no, you, you have the summer strategy. Like, you know what it is, but obviously you're deciding to just move that to the, to the, uh, the fall I European guess. season. Yeah. Right. But the cards that are in your gallery are shockingly good at this point. Yeah. And are you planning on winning all-star rare with these cards? I think like being able to win all-star rare, like the global competitions, it really comes down to having a bigger choice of players. I think matchups is the key. Like just having the best players, I personally don't think that's going to win you all-star rare. Yes, it might win it maybe like once a year, possibly if you get lucky. But then again, if you have a team of just the best players, the chances of other people who have done the same are probably going to be quite high of having those best players in one lineup um, it, just because of their names and their notoriety and everything. But I think it really comes down to having a bigger gallery, a, a little bit of a better choice that you can make on a weekly basis. So all-star rare, when it comes down to that, I think it's just really down to having good pieces from multiple strong teams in different divisions. I think somebody's bound to bring this up in, in the chat, but I, I completely appreciate the irony of the three of us talking about winning all-star rare when the two of you are filling in for the guy who won it last weekend. <laughs> 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 but nobody needs to hear from that whale about winning Kimmick through all-star rare. My best um, is third place in all-star rare pro. I don't know how far Nep got, but that, that's my best. Oh, all-star rare pro, I've, I've got second place, I think two or three times. All-star rare. <laughs> I mean, There's so many I can't I'm, even remember. I'm, I'm just, I just wailed too high to care about all sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Said the guy who brought this up. Um, <laughs> before I go any further, thank you to everybody for joining us. I was, it looks like the, my God, the first comment Kahuna Gaming came in, what is that, like five hours before the stream started. So uh, somebody mentioned later on that the new competition of this show is just getting the first uh, comment in. So thank you to everybody. I actually didn't even post the video until last night. So appreciate the the hardcore uh, attempts here. But the <clears throat> somebody mentioned it. Here it is. Javier is like, you need a for back to the all-star rare thing. Goalkeeper defensive stack, two attacking mids with set pieces and a good forward would seem like the best chance to win. Sorry, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Um, yeah. So <laughs> If I could put it on the side, I would, but I... Nah, no, it's idea. all good. It's all good. Uh, I'm just so fun of it. It's one of those that, like, strategically, yeah, that makes sense. But, like, you're not always... The, the two attacking midfielders with set pieces have to have the right matchups on the same game. We, like, everything has to come together. And when I, when I won All-Star Rare back in the day, like, the lineup was a total shit show. Like, it, it, there was no... Like, it might have been extras. Like, I had... They were probably my better cards at the time, but like there was no, you wouldn't ever look at that lineup and be like, I'm going to do that because that's what wins. And actually that brings me on something else, but this isn't off topic, so I won't get there. But do, Chani, it seems like you very early on were like, I'm going to focus on the pro divisions. Like you got some super rares and Nep, it seems like you are just recently getting to that point where you were like, I hate rare. But do yeah. you think you're going to still prioritize All-Star Rare given that like it is different than like Champion Europe Rare or Challenger Rare? Like we have the ETH payouts at the top. So it is a little more enticing. You can use whatever cards you want. Like is All-Star Rare actually falling down your priority list or is it still closer to the top? I definitely, I think I took it from SU fans like when he was talking about All-Star Rare Pro and how it was easier to win, you know, theoretically. Obviously, maybe it costs more, but it... it Definitely opened my eyes a little bit. And again, like, you know, I had so many discussions with so many people over the months. And one of the one of the biggest pieces of advice I'll always give someone is like, you just never stop learning, right? Like you, everything is a learning experience. And it's crazy how just one comment or one piece of content can completely divert your entire course of action on so rare. And so just watching that podcast that you and Sean did, where he talked about All-Star Rare Pro, like being the obvious thing to prioritize. I was like, how did I just not see that? Like how, like with a gallery my size, with some of the super as I had, how do I not see that? And so, yeah, I started prioritizing it more, but I actually think, um, 
I think rares right now, especially the MLS rares, like they're so, so, so cheap that, it, that if you're in the rare and rare pro divisions, obviously not everyone can just afford to go and buy everything, but if you're in those divisions, you have to also be prioritizing that because of the ETH. And, and I actually found it quite strange. I was looking with stream yesterday at the number of entrants because this week's points are wild to get a reward in All-Star Rare Pro. And I thought it would be real nice if so rare on anomaly weeks like this just extended the prize pool because of the number of games where there are licensed players rather than licensed teams. But I can't personally believe that more people are entering Cat 240 Limited than All-Star Limited. It just doesn't make sense. Like, because you still also have the ETH in All-Star Limited, okay, you're not necessarily playing against the game, but, you know, it's $3,000 for All-Star Limited ETH prize pool. Like, only need to finish top 300, which I don't know what the points discrepancy is going to be, but once you add collection bonus, captain bonus, XP bonus, season bonus, if you hit 250 in All-Star, sorry, in Captain 40 Limited, it's very possible you would have just got top 300 in All-Star Limited. It may, maybe like, you know, be interesting to see like the difference in, in gap there. But um, yeah, I, 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 uh, I think you should absolutely, All-Star Rare, All-Star Limited, like the ETH is there as well. The cards are there and there's no cap. So yeah, I, I think you should be prioritizing it. Yeah. Johnny, where does it fall for you? Because you do have more of a U23 emphasis. I mean, Not anymore. <laughs> well, you did. You're right. You're right. <clears throat> I still do, but like for me, as Nep was saying it, like I think the enticement of Cap 240 is mainly people just try to beat the game because they think it's easier than to beat at anyone else in the leaderboards. And at the same time, it's like a sense of oh, I'm avoiding all the big hitters, so there's a chance I can, you know, rank higher and get the ETH plus a card possibly. I guess that's like one of the viewpoints there. And I'm surprised, though, that Cap240 has more entrance than All-Star. That is mad. Um, but yeah, like, <laughs> I can't believe that's actually true. That's insane. It's, I think there is, like, a, a big psychological part of I just want to win something. And mm. being able to not have to compete against other people, like, realistically, like, as long as you hit 250, like, you win. That's a big mm. thing. For a lot of people and i remember like with all-star rare like that's why there were so many content or like when the threshold was in all-star rare like that's why there were so many entries in i can't believe rare. it was that easy to get beef back then back in the day like <clears throat> they were just insane it. yeah 205 <laughs> is, was great there was <laughs> yeah it was insane <laughs> but the yeah i think i think a lot of it for the for cap 240 at least is that it's much easier for people to see the roi time frame and it, it is longer with limited, I think. Actually, limited and rare is probably not that much different uh, in terms of like the amount of time you need. But I think there's just fundamentally something of if I spend this amount on cards, I need to win this many thresholds, and then I'm free rolling. That was that, that was that, that was, was me. That was me. It's super rare. <laughs> Ch Chad is like, oh, I just paid like. One ETH for this guy thresholds. and three ETH for this guy. But don't worry, in like 72 thresholds, I'll have it all back. <laughs> but that's the thing. That, that's the thing. Like, that's how you get people like myself or other users to engage even more with the market. Like, I think that's that, that type of stuff makes a lot of sense for engaging existing user, users even more. And while it may be funny, at the same time, I like... If you look at my rewards lately, I think I've, I've been able to win as many super rares as rares. And it's just down to like bringing in those super rares and being able to play those divisions and like slowly moving up from rare to rare pro and then into the super rare divisions. And I think cap 240 and all these new divisions that they added, those really help like as you want to progress up there. Have you ever got to the point where you're like, I don't want to play rare anymore. Like, I no. just want to play super rares. No, not yet. Because I feel like, I don't want to be the, the guy, but like, feel like we had the dip. I feel like we, we have stabilized and then the list or play has been added. And I feel like the values and everything for rares are, are probably going to go up or at least stay somewhat healthy. I don't think we're going to see the same type of drop again that we had before. Like, 
I mean, there's just that Lewandowski uh, limited price. Oh. <laughs> like, we're not going to have that. that is wild. Like. <laughs> we're not going to have that graph anywhere where it goes like this and then, oh, <laughs> at least you'd hope. Uh, but I think, yeah, I, I'm definitely uh, interested still in all-star rare. And especially when the ETH got introduced, I was like, oh, this is this is something really nice to go after. I think there was just a, like, there was a part of my own, like, so rare time where I, like, just started getting the super rares. And the jump just felt so big. And it, not to say it's, like, small now. Like, it's still a very significant difference. And I know there are plenty of people who, you know, they they play a lot of rares and it's like, hey, maybe you should get a super rare. And they're like, yeah, but it's going to be so much in my gallery and I don't really want to have that risk in like one player. But I, I will say as somebody who did finally like make the jump and this sounds really, I don't know what even the word is, but like winning super rares is really cool. Like yeah. it doesn't matter who they are. And you and don't worry, you will if you start winning them, you'll get your tier five super rare, and you're like, oh, this guy is literally worth like twenty pounds. No. But it's like, but it's great and it's fun. No. And I disagree I think completely that, now because I that? think I dis I disagree with the very end of that sentiment because I think, oh. uh, I I think collection bonus is going to play a humongous part of so rare, and uh, I think you disagree, Led, and I know. PSU fans disagrees, and most people in my streams disagree. But now, especially winning a Super Rare, your likelihood of a first mint or a jersey mint has increased exponentially, which gives them insane collection value, which gives them much more value. So even now winning a Tier 5 Super Rare, like especially if you get one of or a jersey mint, you could probably get 100, 200 bucks just from that guy that's got, you know, Zolarian super rare and he just wants to push that up to two or three percent and just wants to do it on that one hit i i, I think it's going to be I, I think it's going to make a significant impact on the future of the server market i wasn't i wasn't disagreeing and to be, for those of you who are listening didn't see that i like started chuckling i the only reason i started laughing was about the collection bonus was during your stream a few days ago when you bought a bunch of cards for your collection bonus and Chani and I were both in the chat like, what the hell are these cards that you bought? <laughs> and you're like, yeah. no, 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 there's a plan here. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So, so, so let, 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 me, let me just talk you through, through my thought process with that as well, especially at rare level, right? I, like, I don't know this at all. I'm just guessing that this is going to happen, but I think they're going to start using collection bonus in Cap 20 and Cap 40 as a way to get like an edge, right? Okay. If they do that, it gives unbelievable value to having 5% on your 240 rare players. Yeah. There are only 100 at the very most of each rare, and then even, you know, obviously only one one of and one jersey mint of each player as well. And you can buy them now. Look, I'm picking up rares at like £5, and the like special versions of work jersey mint or whatever at like £10. And they just cannot possibly get lower. And if I even just win one threshold, that covers like five to 10 purchases of all of these players, assuming that the collection bonus is the reason I got the threshold in the first place. But in another six months, nine months, a year's time, if they implement this, hoarding is going to become like astronomical on Sora. So to try and get some random 2020 Daegu forward to get your SSE and you're up to 5% is going to be next to impossible. And so I'm getting involved as early as possible because there's almost no downside and incredibly high upside. Do you think it's good <clears throat> that we're making those types of players valuable? Yes, I think it's, I think it's great for Sora. Yeah, I think so too. I think it raises the floor. Generally speaking, if we're speaking uh, like crypto language, I, I think it it like boosts up the floor a little bit. And what I really like about it is like you get those players that don't get as much play time, especially in the European region. You know that these guys could easily get moves where they actually become smashers again. So like I I'm collecting the Liverpool uh, players, and I specifically went after like Ox and Vinaldum and all these guys who are just sat on the bench or even at different teams at this point not getting as much play time, who still could have some upside to them. If the Ox goes to, I don't know, the championship and is a starting 11 player, that gives me tons of utility with weekends and midweeks and all that stuff. So 
I think it's also really important to pick and choose which players you want, unless you want them, like the actual 5%. And obviously you want to have everyone, or at least what, what is the amount you have to have as like a bare minimum from every squad? I think it, it's like it really 500 just points. depends, right? Like, to, like two players for 5%, I mean, you could probably get there in like 10 players if you just had the right players. Yeah, like jer jerseymans Jersey, and stuff. Yeah, that's good. Cards, rookie cards. <clears> and that's kind of, that's, that's going to be... That's probably a bit tough, but yeah. But I, I, um, I also think it adds value. Like somebody in the chat before said about sometimes winning that five bucks is better than winning like a tier five limited. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I think it adds value to just winning just in general. Like hitting a card, especially at, as I say, rare and super rare level, gives you that chance of the first mint, chance of the jersey mint, chance of like just getting a collection piece. Like right now I'm missing four Arsenal players and... One guy has like a couple of them and one other guy paid almost a hundred pounds for a guy who sold for like 20 pounds a couple of weeks before and he won't get minted again because he's left Arsenal. So for me to now get these pieces is going to be incredibly costly. But to the guy that paid like, I think it was like 14 pounds for Cedric Suarez, he's, he's living the dream. Now, if he won that Cedric Suarez and he was worth 14 pounds, you'd maybe be a bit disappointed with that. But if just one person wants that for their collection... Brilliant. I can't wait for Chani's video where he bought like Andy Robertson so that he could boost his Watford Alex Oxlade Chamberlain card. Yeah. <laughs> That's the video I'm looking for. <laughs> I think I think I'm done. I think I have 13 Liverpool players from like the 2020 collection. And I think if you get like the extra 90 days as like another 10 on everyone. So I'm above 250 then. And that's it. Like I'm done at 3%. I don't think. I'm necessarily going to push many people past three. I think three is quite easy slash reasonable to get to, especially if you have some jersey mints. I think I'm like the number one collector for Underlicht, and I have like four cards. <laughs> and they're all like first owner. Uh, no, first owner for Verbruggen, that's not the one. He's just the first mint. But then the other ones are like number one mints, and I just picked them up. And there we go. Am I am I still first? Um, I only see it on so rare, I believe, rather than let me see. SD. Um, oh yeah, I don't think we have them all. Oh, actually, I'm second now. Anyways, but yeah, I've like four cards, and I'm at like a score of 180. And some of these guys don't even have the 90 day bonus on them yet. Right. So it's quite reasonable to put to try and push towards three. I'll probably get to three, and and I'm done there, because getting past that it, it can get a bit tough. And then at that point, you have to ask yourself. Are my funds better spent elsewhere? Like, am I? Is it better if I, instead of buying eight players who are just sat on the bench, actually go and start another collection with one or two players who actually start, and I get like the one percent bonus for them? Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I think three percent is reasonable. Is reasonable to go after anything after that? I feel like you better love that club. <laughs> There's nothing worse also, and Nev, you kind of brought this up, of finding someone else who is trying to collect the same club you are. Like I have a few um, FC Soul rares, and I was like, I, I should like try to build these up. And then Tekker's got all of the cheap like one ofs or jersey. Uh, and I'm like, yeah. well, I'm out. Because if I know if he's going after, he's going to beat me to them. I know. It's fine. But I was like, that, ah, man, that's a killer. Yeah, it's frustrating. Five percent for Portland Timbers, Nip. No. I sure, I sure do, mate. Yeah. <laughs> On Portland that point, Moore. real quick, it's really frustrating trying to collect Liverpool because <laughs> yeah. you well, never know, right? has them all. <laughs> yeah, he just has them all. I'm like yeah. Jersey Mint, maybe no. Okay, maybe First Mint, no. No chance on any of them. You just no. have to get all the ones you can get. That's it. Has he been collecting the the most recent? non-launch edition ones like the 2022 23s non-launch edition like liverpool spending, actually has like more collections because of that yeah. yeah i think you spend a significant amount on trent if i'm not mistaken to get his jersey mint uh the 66 i believe it was right, right. i mean i assume it Look, there you go see like uh, now obviously he has an insane gallery anyway and just cleans up because he has insane cards with like level 20s all over the place. But when you look at those fours and five percents across all those teams, like I, I, I again, I genuinely think people are underestimating the, the impact 
that five percent's worth of points per player could have on your overall like seasonal return on yeah. your rewards. I, I, and I'm I glad they that, are doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Just I, keep I, it on the low. This is not live, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> but 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 like, and that's what I mean. Like that's what I'm trying to get in ahead of the curve because I, I like I forecast that this will have the most significant impact on SO5 that we've ever seen. Uh, that that's my belief. And if I'm wrong, as I say, I'll just go and get rid of all those rares to Pavel, get like ninety percent of my value back, and well, you know, maybe about three percent of my value back off. I was gonna say where. <laughs> Well, Where did you get ninety percent from Pavel? Because, because today I traded two goalkeepers that I won for Armani rare, and it was only like thirteen percent increase in value, and he just accepted it. I was like, "Thanks very much." There you go. So yeah, I, I, was, I, was... I wonder if if we get the chance to like sometime in the future, if we get the chance to list up a collection for a specific price. So that's the I other think that thing. will change a yeah. lot. That's the other thing that I was thinking about. It's like, you know, when you think about like the physical cards, people like to buy collections. Now, if I have the entire Arsenal collection, even if they're not first mints or jersey mints, if I have the entire Arsenal collection and somebody just wants it, yeah. throw an offer down and then I can send you the whole collection rather than him having to go to maybe an inactive account that's got three cards and then a guy who's like really trying to like hardball him for like half the collection. Like it'd be real nice and easy. It's just like, yeah, here you go. Buy the whole stack of, you know, that's it. And then go yeah, again. or you just search up for a specific bundle and then immediately people can look up like, okay, this bundle yeah. is at 4%. I can buy that or I can buy the 2% one for that price. And, and in fact, nice the fact thing. that so rare now have bun or sell bundles in fives, it would make sense for them to sell like a starting 11, wouldn't it? Like, I wonder if their prices are. have gone up. If bundle uh, prices have gone they up. They haven't. Like, I've, 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 a, a, guy, a guy that I know that's been like trying to get Aurora Red stacks bundles it's definitely not in the stream now talking on camera um noticed that yeah you can still get bundles for pretty good prices so so you're talking about the bundles not the starter packs yeah mm -hmm. the, I th yeah but like doesn't it make sense to sell like a whole bundle like a, a, like the entire club so you can just go and buy that five percent instantly i think so rare again would generate a good amount of revenue especially at rare and super rare level could you imagine like a full super rare 26 man arsenal package yeah what would somebody pay for that it like it would be crazy yeah but there are only like a handful of clubs and a handful of users that could apply to right like who's who's buying realistically the 26 super rares of like udinese me <laughs> but here, and again here's and one, that's right? the team you want though i think those are the teams you want to have then because yeah. like some weeks you will be able to absolutely smash with that stack especially with the five percent like, I think with the collection bonus, it makes most sense to go for, like, the mid-table teams who, in specific game weeks, obviously play against the 17th, 18th in the league. That's when you utilize yeah. that perfectly. Yeah, I 100% agree. And, and you don't only get, like, let's say you get Udinese. You don't only get Challenger Europe. You also get four players in Capsule You mean 40 champion. champion? Sorry, Champion Europe. Yeah, yeah, you get four players in Capsule 40 because obviously you wouldn't have the goalkeeper. And then... A couple of the leftovers and scrubs for cap 220 and all of a sudden you're like fleshing out three teams with this one stack and it just makes sense yeah i just think in most situations there you're getting like five percent more points to then finish like 68 points out of the rewards instead of 70 <laughs> yeah yeah well, obviously you know yeah. if you're using the the scrubs that's there but i, I know professor techers was doing uh like tracking his collection bonus on a team and i didn't realize and i, I want to go and like, find the content he's got on it and that last week, the increase in points actually netted him less valuable, oh, reward, reward. <laughs> which was which was quite uh, quite disappointing. Because I, again, I was like, I saw that and I was like, right, I've been doing it all wrong. I need to sell <laughs> lots of players. This, this is very bad. But and like, I'm excited to see after a prolonged period of time, three months, six months, like not the not the value of rewards he's won but the discrepancy of the difference in the reward value right and if that is more than you paid for the cards that you bought for the collection bonus in the first place over time depending on your goals because as Chani said earlier like uh, you might be better off just taking all of that and buying one sick player that helps you win loads more rewards and that snowballs better but i, I think over time if it does benefit you it could be a great way to play so rare which is why i've got that uh, Paul and Timbers full collection because I want to spend the next sort of like 10 game weeks before European season comes back 
to see what the return on that investment is over that 10 weeks or eight weeks or whatever. So I completely agree with you that the collection bonus is like, is going to be a big part of so rare. Like the, not that I don't think it's collecting cause it is, but like, we're not buying these things cause we like them. Like we're buying them cause we like other things and we just want them to get better with these cards yeah. that we're buying. Yeah. Which didn't, I guess sorry, like, is fine. Can they specify that they're going to do more with collections stuff coming forwards? Which again, like if, if you're in now, you're ahead of the curve, right? Like whatever they do, you get massive benefits from. Like if you it's already like VIP experiences and stuff, right? Just that's oh, what is I that right? Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah, like the Liverpool the one. There you oh, go. Nice. Yeah. Nice little box seat. Yeah, if they can send me an Arsenal signed jersey that I could sell to reinvest into Sosoria, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> just, just what they want the experiences in, in real life. I hey, that Man good. City one is probably worth a ton, you know. That travel yeah. winning team, all signed. I don't think you get that anywhere else. And that once again shows how much Sore, like how far Sore has come. I mean, even just having the access to get it, let yeah. alone the ability exactly, to get it. Yeah. To get one effectively for free, yeah. Like use your coins, but we didn't buy our coins or anything. Um, <clears throat> oh, so have you thought about that? How you go up the leaderboard because of your collection bonus, and now you're winning more coins? Yeah. See. Yeah. <laughs> but you like like didn't actually think of that because I, well, I did. But I, I, I also thought to <laughs> like the next stage of like by having the collection bonus, you also get more points, which gets you more experience a lot quicker, which gives you more XP, which gives you more points. And and so obviously up until about, I think, level 13, where it gets quite costly to move up each XP level, um, you get that exponential growth where it's only going to take you about like three to five game weeks to get somebody to like 7% XP bonus on top of the collection bonus and the season bonus. And I think at that point, like 17% bonus, you don't even need a great week to push yourself up a tier in rewards. But when you have that great week, like as, as a serial second place loser for me with eight second places and only one first place i think uh, on five of those if i had a couple of percent bonus extra on players i'm first instead and that's a significant impact in rewards if you get lucky and eve as well <clears throat> yeah yeah well unless you get like cucho or something like that which right want, yeah who would not want to win cucho <laughs> <clears throat> me yeah <laughs> The best was winning Cucho and selling Cucho because I was so angry. I rage sold him and then Nep did like three hour stream and every example he's like, well, obviously you want to get Cucho and let me just get the best for it. Oh, here's Cucho. And someone brought this up earlier, not to go back to the all-star rare thing, but I'm going to because I remember this. Somebody was like, surely if you have Andre Blake, Kai Wagner, Carlos Hill, Cucho and Zellerion, you could win all-star rare over the summer. And I don't know. It doesn't look like they. And, and so, and so here's the thing, right? You could take the number one player in every position, and then whoever your favorite number two player is, according to like the rankings, and they would have almost never won any division. Yep. Because it, yeah, it just doesn't work like that. Um, however, I did build a team in for giving like the best chance. You know, you t I was I was assigned homework for this uh, this podcast from Led. He told me to actually plan to win all star rare, so I did. And um, the game week I plan to win it in is, I believe, three eight six. And it is, it is also Zalarian, and it is also Hill. But instead of Cucho Hernandez, I've got Cecinia. And then instead of Blake and Wagner, who are obvious choices because Wagner was good last season, um, but I've got Derso and Meluso from Gymnasia. Mm. And they both score quite nice. You you could go Park Jin Siop from Jean Book as well, who's a really good defender. Um, but I, I like the synergy with Derso and Meluso. And I don't think that they've ever also won. But here's where collection bonus comes in, right? If you have 17% instead of the 5% that's there on all of these guys, I think you you at least increase your rewards. And when I did a like a an experiment on that of like giving even a 3% bonus or a 4% bonus. It it took, uh, the, the team that I built had four, four stars with the bonus, one without it, two tier ones with the bonus, none without it, 
or all the or rather the stars that dropped down to tier ones were now the tier ones and i i again i just thought man again it's over a three month period or a six month period that is a significant increase in rewards where even if you did have to spend like 200 or 300 dollars to get five percent on a hill or on a sesinia it it comes out in in the wash it comes out the other side of things which game week is this uh, 386, I believe. So thank you for <clears throat> doing all of that. Yeah. Because... You got the same players. <laughs> I have them all. <laughs> or I don't have... Excuse me, I don't have Mayuso. So I'll have to get someone else. Uh, where's Carlos? Here? See, he just wanted you to build him his lineups then. Oh, so, so I actually think Hill doesn't have a game week in 386. So you would have had to oh. use uh, Cucho. I don't have Cucho. Yeah, so and I think the other game week was maybe like three, three. They all have games in eight, three, eight, four, and eight, five, and then Hill doesn't play in eight, six. But the reason why it's better is because uh, Gymnasia have an incredible home game, and they like Meluso bags like eighty to ninety points minimum every home game. Um, so I would, I, I would like targeted that game week for it. Oh, man, now I'm gonna have to go win All Star Rare. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you go, go ahead. What is this, six weeks away? Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, if like you told me to plan for to win it, so I thought actually, like last week was a great week to plan to win something because the I mean, I like I I literally planned to win America Rare Pro, right? But um, some other guy decided to also plan to do that, and he did it. So you know. But I came second place with like 290 something points and it, and it was like, it was just great. And I didn't necessarily plan it, but if you just look a few game weeks ahead and again, being ahead of the curve, I think a lot of people start to look like two or three game weeks ahead. So if you start looking four or five, obviously you can't account for injuries, rotations, like random anomalies that just rule players out. But you can get a general understanding for like, okay, there's not a lot of fixtures in this game week. This is a matchup that's heavily, heavily favored towards one side. And then even on the particular game week last week, there was only like four games in the whole of the Americas. And yet the prize pool, other than the ETH, was the same as All-Star Rare Pro. But this is just a no-brainer to enter into this competition if you've got the cards. And yeah, there you go. Do you think that there's a negative to streaming your plan to win All-Star Rare and giving other people the idea? Hundred percent, and that's yeah. that's why. Like, even though I've got the John Book stat, like, uh, like full collection and the Timbers full collection, I won't reveal what the true purpose is until after it succeeds. Because otherwise, I will not. It, it would be impossible to complete. I, I brought the, brought that up because somebody DM me yesterday, and I think it actually applies to the two of you more than it does me. But the DM was effectively. How do you feel about people trailing your purchases? Okay, so so do, do me a favor, real quick. Go to my uh, gallery on on SD. Uh, yeah, I was just looking up your to see who you won last week. Well done on and, Dean St. Clair, who is now Franco Armani. He is, <clears throat> and and go to game week three seven nine, and on America Limited, just open up all five of those. I think that's that's you, not me. Oh, oh no, that is me. That's not how many you. lineups in that? Oh, so academy lineups. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so yeah. get on. Just open up all those cards in different tabs and and look. And this, I remember this you, is. I remember this stream. I, I could genuinely like make a killing off of trading if I just did this with cards all day, every day. Like. So I, I like I bought in for eight bucks, and then the top sale that day was like ten dollars or twelve dollars even. And and you can you, like if you can, if you can highlight where I bought him, it might be a bit tricky to find the particular one. Oh, I'll just I just go to the top one. No, no, it's not me on most of these. <laughs> um, but uh, when did I get him on the sixteenth? I think thirteenth. So yeah, somewhere around here. Hold on, let me. He was at uh, he was at like eight back. or something, wasn't he? Yeah, eight sixty five. One of those lower ones. Yeah, and 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 I got an old season card as well, and then 
there was it's it's a lot easier to see on the other cards. To be fair, I didn't realize so many Merims got bought. Well, you gave away the secret. Yeah, well, actually, you know. gave away the secret because he was AAA matchup on SD. Yeah. So <laughs> this is your fault, really. <laughs> no, um... <clears throat> if, if, go go to Lopez. He will be the absolute one hundred percent clearest. There you go. I mean, you could just see the trail of dots shooting up. Yeah, two twenty two. Sort of naturally, and I like, cashed in yeah. and used my community for my own personal gain and made that two bucks <laughs> by selling him. <laughs> <laughs> and if he's an affiliate, you get even more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, no, I, I I put that five bucks towards buying his rare. So, ooh, there we yeah. go. And he is actually this week in my All Star Rare Pro lineup. That's hopefully going to net me a reward. And I only found him because he was a triple A matchup. And mm -hmm. he was one of the, the, the reason why, like, and, and he, he, like the, the whole point, right, was how the, the power of, like the power of knowledge is so valuable and so rare, right? It's like the reason why his price went up wasn't because I bought him, but because I explained why he was a good pickup. And the reason mm -hmm. why he's a good pickup is because he's moved clubs and his L15 before he's moved clubs versus L15 at his new club are wildly different. And although they're about to have like a, a little break, you can see like a significant increase in his scores. And so the fact that he was like around a dollar was just wild for, an, uh, for a good player. And so now when even just a handful of people hear that, that makes sense. I'll, he's undervalued. I'm going to go and buy him, right? There you go. And, and it, it causes, you know, two X or three X in his price. I didn't even mean, so you at least have a medium where you explain your purchases. Like, I don't really talk about the cards that I buy. I talk about the rewards that I win that I hate, but I don't talk about cards I buy. And like, I just don't, my response to somebody saying that, like how I feel about people trailing my purchases was like, I really hope they don't do that because like everyone's situation is different and I don't win enough. <laughs> like I don't win enough consistently for any single card to be purchased like oh laird bought him i'll i'm sure he's good i'll buy him i i say that and there are plenty of cards that i have bought because i'm like oh Pira's bought a card that's probably a good one. Oh, josh fourth he knows that that league well yeah i'll buy that card shout out to both of them and but like for, so everyone listening i am not the guy you trail trail these guys more than me especially <laughs> now since he explains why he's buying these cards Back back to your point of like you know, uh, well I, I think you like talked about you know me like almost revealing my strategy too much like yeah that I mean that that could honestly be a problem like uh, especially with what I'm trying I'm going to be trying like what one of the things I like about the limited side of things for me personally in my personal financial situation is the affordability of just getting anything that I want allows me to practice things that I can apply quite literally and specifically into rares because the points will be exactly the same in those tournaments. So I can see on a genuine basis where I would have finished in that division above by using the limiteds. Did you buy the rares later? If the, if like the experiment with the limiteds works, I'll, I'll move it up into rares. Yeah. And you get those points back? No, 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 but it's, it's not about the like. It's not about looking backwards. It's about understanding that the method works, and if the method works, it it also works in rare. Maybe not in all star rare pro because, like, yeah, getting the limited, get, getting those super rares to five percent will be next to impossible. Um, but yeah, I, I will be able to apply it in rare. And and hey, you know, again, maybe something else changes, and I'm like, man, if only I just did this with rares in the first place, I'd be sitting here winning all star rare instead of all-star limited, but I didn't. So, so it's more of a collection research, like a collection bonus research? Uh, no, um, no, it's, it's like, yes, but also it's, it's a, a, like abusing an untapped area of so rare that people don't look at, that I've looked at, and if it works, yeah, great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if <laughs> you can decipher what it is from from that <laughs> alone, then you deserve it, right? Like, I think that's one of my favorite things about your 
Sora streams and everyone who <clears throat> doesn't watch them, they're all on Twitch. What feels like every day for like six hours, it's great. Like anytime you turn on twitch.tv slash Nepenthes, go subscribe. Follow Nep on Twitter too. Good, great Twitter follow. Yeah. Um, you should, but like you look at things, I think you you look at so rare differently than a lot of people in a good way, but you explain why you look at it that way. And you're like, this happened. So why did this happen? And you go through the process of like, what, why you think a lineup was put together this way? Why did this person, like you've been talking about, what is his name? Um, Sir So Rare, is that who the- Oh yeah, yeah, the Houston guy, yeah. He did the Houston Dynamo stack yeah. and it's like, well, why did he do that? What, what can we learn from that? He, it actually did work, but like it didn't just work because he bought a Houston Dynamo stack. Like there's situation, there the greatest situation possible happened for him that they had a midweek game that nobody was really playing, a heavily rotated LAFC side, and like that can work. And so then it's like, can this apply elsewhere? And so, and and, and that's where that's where like that. strategy comes in of like what what this is why I asked you the other day what like what what are you on out so rare because for some people it's to be free rolling. And I, I, I like I listened to you talking to Maxime about this, and it not everyone's not going to be able to free roll, right? It's, un, unless you're doing it like you maybe you put in five bucks, yep. and yeah, okay, you could free roll. Well done. You've got like three limiteds that you couldn't sell even if you wanted to to Pavel. But like, like I, I think a good way to play so rare, and one of the ways that I want to kind of like start experimenting with and kind of like exploring is looking to get just one hundred percent return on investment on a on a on a project, whatever that may be, a lineup, multiple lineups, or in my case, uh, Timbers collection, right? So the the sole purpose in like the end goal, which I can speak about, like without ruining what the video may well be, become, is just to get a hundred percent return on investment on that. And once I've achieved that, have I won so rare, right? Because like, if your end goal is to make a living off of so rare, you need insane investment, both financially and time. And, and you need to understand lots of things that you just won't at the start. If, you're, if your goal is to have fun with So Rare, like like real fun, not like, oh, look at me, I've got like a semi-pro and like three, you know, um, like Cat 20 lineup out, or like I'm having fun. I, I personally don't think that's fun. I think that's like, I'm sure people do enjoy that, but I think having fun is like ha having a team or your team or the club that you're a fan of like in, in the game. And I think if you can get to that point and not have it have costed too, too much at all, I think that's a great way to play so rare. So if, if you can like, whatever, who, if, if for Chani, right? Like, let's say you're, you don't have like too much budget for your entertainment. You can go and buy a Liverpool limited stack. I wouldn't buy next seasons because you're going to pay way too high. I would definitely buy this seasons if, in my personal opinion, or this is not financial. Advice. And then you've got the whole season to get a hundred percent return on that investment. And it will only take the odd midweek where you've got Liverpool against a Champions League minnow, where they slap, you win a tournament, <clears throat> cover all the costs. Now you're free rolling, but you're not free rolling at a level of like a 50th gallery or 500th gallery, but you, you have no exposure in the site other than the fact that you loved the journey. And that's where I think the positive side of so rare comes in bringing this to the masses because then somebody's experience isn't oh, when I spent a hundred quid and before I knew it, my gallery was worth 10 pounds. Don't go on that site. The experience was I bought a Liverpool stack. I lived full Liverpool collection. I managed to win some cool cards, sell them, get my money back. And, and the overall experience and the overall like discussion point from that casual person to their friends that are talking about so rare is a positive one, which invites more people onto the platform, which is better for everyone. I think that's one of my favorite things about Chani's content, actually, because like the way that you described it is when you are successful, you can go through and be like, I built this. This is a gallery I built and I took my time and I used my resources and I put them in specific places. And this is this was the outcome. And obviously, like not everybody's going to have a positive outcome just because you like put something together doesn't mean A, you're good at it or B it ended up working but yeah. there is a lot of so rare that is like the here are the pieces that i used here is how i got them yeah. look how good i am yeah. and this was successful i think at the end of the day 
it's also about like it, like life in general is about experiences, right? You want to have some good experiences and memories to look back on. And I think the one thing with Sore that still people seem to really underestimate is just the enjoyment that you get out of the game and being able to watch your players. Like I still remember my live stream when I when I needed Musa, uh, yeah, Musa Dembele to score for Olympic Lyon for me to like get second or third in All Star Rare Pro, and he actually did it live on stream and like chat is freaking out i'm freaking out like those types of moments not just for content creators but also like friends who also play the game so let's say you're like three buddies who play so rare and everyone knows through so rare data like they keep track of their friends and how they are doing throughout the game week like all i always check how all my buddies are doing you guys and then like there's a conversation going on and like you know okay this next matchup that guy, if he scores, my friend is going to be winning All-Star. And like those things and the community part of the game are just massive. And even though we're all competing against each other, people still support each other all the time and try to help whenever they can, at least from the community I have and with you guys. And I think there's there's a part with Sora that will really get people hooked. And I, I haven't seen many people who come in and left and hated the game like there's a very small percentage of people who do that and most people absolutely love it i i've been well i'm not gonna say nobody but I, it's got to be a handful of people who came in and played the game and were like i actually don't like the game like, I feel yeah, like everybody sold off twice right to pavo <clears throat> right yeah but like it's the <laughs> it's the people who were like i put in 100 pounds and i have 10 pounds now and like, that's not fun. And I'm like, I get that. That part is yeah. not fun. But the game itself, like just brings so much. And I, Chani, that, that part, uh, point you brought up is one I bring up or I think about all the time. It's just the idea that fundamentally we are all competing against each other. The three of us have lineups in the same competitions. Only one of us can finish first. Yeah. And yet if one of us does, or, you know, just hot, you know, somebody gets a good reward, everyone's like, hey, that's awesome. Like, great job. They're not like, you know. Isn't that the thing. great thing about Sora anyways? Like you don't have to win to succeed per se. Like, you, you know, I, I, I genuinely wish you both the most second and third places behind me <laughs> in the world. <laughs> you know, like as long as, as long as I'm, I'm first, you, you know, you, you can have good success. But it is in terms of strategies, it is, it's the thing. And in terms of like information, like because the people that come in and have a hundred pound gallery that becomes a ten pound gallery, sometimes it's out of their control, a, a catastrophic injury or transfer to a non-playable league, or you know the no, nobody really. I'm sure somebody did, but nobody really could have predicted the the drop in prices and and whatnot. But in a stable market, if you're going from a hundred pound gallery to a ten pound gallery, that is strategy. That's just making bad choices. But by content creators and and just general awareness of so red developing and strategies developing and awareness of that coming it just makes it even more hyper competitive because if everybody's applying the same sensible logic to their purchases and their lineups and their captain choices and their matchup choices it's just going to raise the points needed to win a reward but whilst that makes it harder to win and therefore could be perceived as less enjoyable it's also an absolute necessary because the flip side of that is nobody knows what the hell they're doing and everyone hates it, right? <laughs> yeah. I think it's, it's similar to like FIFA. I remember back in the day when Ultimate Team came out and no one really knew how to play online. And then we had tutorials and when we found glitches and mechanics that work the best way and all of a sudden you're playing a hyper competitive game because everyone is aware of everything that is within the game. Yeah. So I think it's only natural that things will be a bit harder to, to be able to win rewards and everything. I think the scores are going, are going to go up, but at the end of the day, I still don't think like there is a gap there, there's a, there's a cap on how high you can get in terms of the score. Like we already had the 540 score in rare, like all those things. And I think going back to the collection side of things, this is the next thing, the next skill you have to acquire in order to be able to play the game at the highest level if you want to. If you want to be able to have that edge on other people, going back to what Net was saying with the collections, I think this is and, another thing that we have to acquire. 
that possibly makes it an actual trading card game, which is one of the things that's so rare. Have a Zare mantra, right? Play, trade, win, I think it is. Really? Like, um, trade doesn't really happen in the sense that they want it to happen, which is like a, oh, hey, I've got like a, a Liverpool forward and I'm missing an Arsenal defender. Let's trade. That uh, You'll see that more. Like, it, so if, again, if you're winning those tier fives, tier fours, finding somebody that's got a collection from that club, you go and scour their gallery, you make that trade and, you know, the red paperclip story, you can, you can trade it up or you could just trade it. Maybe you don't get a card that you want, but you get a card that, you know, somebody else wants that you have a card that has a card that you want. That kind of, that kind of style of trading, I, I think, has is is really good uh, and and could you know could again benefit the the platform massively at all levels, even tier fives at limited, and and bring that gamification to so rare where you can actually enjoy playing the game outside of waiting for your scores to come in. Have you guys gotten a number of like trade of like clearly collection bonus? Literally trade? now. Like just okay. now. Yeah, I just oh. got one now. I have Odysseus from 2022 and someone sent me an offer for the 2020 version because I have a Grimaldo from the season. And he like messaged me and was like, oh, I've seen you got a Grimaldo from that season. How about we swap our Odysseus and have like the same XP and stuff? Like, again, it adds another layer to the game that I really, really like. I find that's those are the only ones I've gotten now. Like I've yeah. only gotten the... Hey, actually, they're always terrible. They're, it's more like, I want yours. And mine doesn't help you. Yeah. But I just don't want mine anymore. So please take mine <laughs> so I can take yours. But it's always the same player. Like, I haven't actually gotten one where it's like, I see you have a River Plate collection. And I have a Portland Timbers one. And you have a Timbers card I want. And I have a River Plate card. Like, it's... you'll. I feel like we should be seeing more of those. Of the the formerly worthless player trades because yeah. it actually helps collection bonuses. But instead, I feel like all I've gotten are the, please take this card that doesn't help me so that I can have one that helps me. Yeah. So, so last week I got an offer. I won Hiru Kame and he's only worth like 30 pounds. And I had him listed and some guy kept offering me these trash bag cards and some ETH and I kept saying no. And so he went and got Thomas Party the Arsenal collection and I did that instead into it and I, I was like yep immediately and then he came in the stream he's like I knew that I'd get you and I was like yeah it did <laughs> because that's now a card I didn't have in the collection yeah. but it's, yeah. but he's not like getting you but, he's but finally he's actually like, giving you something yeah, he's yeah. something I want it give me something that, that's worth more than like you know because I, I either want the ETH or like or or you don't get the card like because you giving me even if you give me like eight or ten pounds over value in these other limiteds I then have to go through the process of selling them and trying to negotiate with them and and probably getting less than their you know perceived value on SD. But when you offer me something that I want, it's like okay, even it, it was actually probably even worth a little bit less than the overall value. But I was like, yeah, okay, this is like you know eighty five percent ETH and then fifteen percent of a card that makes sense to me. I'll take it. What do you guys I think? think it's about also, very... another thing, oh, real quick on on the swap on the collection swap thing. Um, if I'm trying to sell players, like I had Preciado's number one first mint super rare, right? And I went into the collection of super rares for Santos Laguna and I searched up like who is like the top guy. And I messaged him and I was like, hey, I have the first mint in case you're interested. And we like talked about it and he was actually interested. I think it adds once again, another thing that you can do as you win rewards, it kind of makes it easier to reach out to people and see if anyone is interested. Um, I was going to say, what do you guys think about this very well thought out and mature thought from Haber that said, I feel like trade should involve a fist fight to the death and whoever wins gets all the cards. Yeah. I feel like it's tough to get everyone together. Aren't we all over the world? That's my yeah, only yeah. my only hesitation. Yeah. On that idea. Well, well, uh, hey, hey you, you put your gallery on the line, I'll put mine on the line and winner takes all. <laughs> Let's go. <Wow. laughs> You're the Panthers. After that, we're fighting to the death, though. Yeah, of course. <laughs> this is exactly the matchmaking <laughs> process that Maxine wanted for the collection bonus for Sora Data. This is it right here. Oh um, my god. Just like I know I know the you know, we're podcasting and, and whatnot, but Sora Data doesn't have all of the cards in a collection. For example, like my Jean Book collection, it just there's just players just, just aren't in there. 
Really? You say that I've got three percent bonus and I actually have four percent bonus, and it just doesn't count specifically like the rookie cards. That's not good. Yeah, makes it very confusing. We'll fix that. Thanks, man. I guess. <laughs> Except for me, the only person that actually uses the collection tab on Sora. No, 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 it should it should work. But I don't, yeah, I'll look into it. I can't fix it, but I'll look into it. <clears throat> um, I've got a six point down score. I knew it because they gave him a tackle for his double double that just a million percent wasn't a tackle. I knew it was coming. Man, all those coins I lost out on since I barely. Glorian, Glorian goated man. I, like, very late decided not to play Zolarian so that I could play Hans Van Aken because I was like, oh, Zolarian for Armenia is, like, not that great. Uh, it literally was a 100 to a 0. Yeah. He's got a new role in the team. He, he's playing like out, out front now instead of out wide for Armenia. So, but who could have known, right, until after the fact? And apparently Verbruggen the Brighton is done, thanks to Noah Brook. Please play. <laughs> What I'm happened to getting worried. out of under 23s? I'm, I'm worried about Jason Steele because he's uh, he's actually done well when he mm -hmm. got into the Brighton squad. So, yeah, I got that Anderlecht collection kicked off just because I had that Bruggen first mint. I mean, I believe in the kid long term, but um, yeah, if I lose out on like one season of utility, that will be painful. I don't know anybody who believes in long term people more than you do. <laughs> It's my favorite. You're like, I believe in this kid long term. And I'm like, I can't think beyond like three weeks. And <laughs> I have a lot of my cards for like over a year now. So yeah, I'm, I'm so, glad. So the, we, we, we was like going down memory lane last night on stream. I was streaming until like two o'clock in the morning, as you do. We were so rare. And um, I was looking I'm at like flat. my first lineups and they contained a lot of rookie cards limited specifically. And I thought, oh, I remember actually. And I talked to Quinny about this when he like welcomed me into the community of open arms. I just used to buy loads of rookies. I thought, if in 10 years these guys are slaying, they're going to be worth so much. And I sold so many of them for so much money over like what I paid for them within like six to 12 months. Like Ujikov in the Russian league like started paying for uh, over Guillaume. And he's, I bought it for £11 and sold it for like £350. And it was just like, like trades like that. And I thought, like that was my initial like, outlook. It's like, let me just buy for the future but yeah now i'm like I, I i need to win today that's the future just win everything now and then i can buy those guys in the future instead of having them now waiting until they're good in the future yeah the whole he's gonna be good one day I'm like mm -mm. If that one day isn't this weekend i don't care <laughs> <laughs> that only happened to me with one player this year and that was gabri vega i think i won him and then quinny was like oh the kid's really talented and I had him for like two weeks and he scored in both games. I was like, yeah, let me move him on. He'll probably, <laughs> yeah. he probably won't be able to sustain this. And then all of a sudden he's linked to every top club in the world. I'm like, oh, cool. So <laughs> good to you. you. Remember, remember when I won Super Air Burkhart and you was like, dude, he's oh, yeah. talent in Germany. Yeah. So he's been injured since and is now yeah. injured, like is now going to be out for another four months. And I could have got like 1.2 ETH for him when I won him. But because oh. Tani told me, that he's like a top talent in Germany, like Bayern Munich are interested in him and all. I was like, yeah, this guy is going to be They all like were. The of Even Real Madrid wanted him. Like, ah, oh, that's so that's so sad that the kid just can't get a break. But that that's oh, like I, one side that you can't predict with the game, yeah. right? Yeah, well, I do have his one of 10. So on the plus side, at one point, one day hopefully. he's going to be worth like <laughs> 10 grand to a guy that needs to complete their collection. <laughs> that is definitely how it works. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, what what they should do, maybe Pavel should do this, is he should set up like a fund where you can almost like mortgage people against future value. You know what I mean? So I can go, I can say to Pavel, look, Burkhart's like going to be worth like 10 ETH one day. So if you just like facilitate me seven, hold him, then I'll give it back and you give him back over time. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think where he would just give you a third of an ETH right now and you'd be like, okay, sure. <laughs> you win. <laughs> Surely the NFTs should allow us to be able to do stuff like that. <clears throat> like the yeah. you you know, the multi-year loan or kickbacks, you know, sell on so, fees. Sure. So yeah, so oh, and that's, just that's do that exactly. offside on PayPal. But yeah, you I mean you could, yeah. Um 
But uh, one of the things I was talking about in my early days in SoRare, because I, I'm sure somebody explained to me how con smart contracts, I, I don't know what smart contracts are. Was I'm, I'm not smart like, enough no. for smart contracts. Yeah. But like, you are absolutely right about that. Yeah, effectively, I could loan you an NFT via a smart contract with certain rules in, and once those have been, the time has expired or the rules have been applied, the card comes back. Now, in, to solve SoRare's loaning problem, how cool would that be? Like if you had legitimate loans, which happens in football as well, right? So if, I, if I'm like like in a few game weeks time, I have three really good lineups and until I got Armani today, zero goalkeepers. And it's like, I would love to like just loan, but officially like loan. So like if somebody has got like a card up on the loan market, a smart contract, you put in the percent of reward valuation that they get back or like a time limit of how many games they can play. And then they get the card back accompanied with any rewards that you would have earned after, you know, after the fact, if there's no rewards, you maybe, or, or you could like set a nominal fee where it's like, you could loan this guy for like 30, $30 for the game week. And I get 0% of rewards and you just get the loan, that sort of thing. Again, it would be so, it would, it would like invigorate the market massively because it would just add another layer to tactics, to strategy, to, to paying the game weeks. And, and you just go and start loaning all the top guys, winning all the top rewards, giving them, you know, arbitrating like 80% of the value out, but just keeping 20% for no cost for yourself. Like, I'd be worried that it crashes the market in general, because if I can just go ahead and have no cards and just buy five with the AAA pick score each week, or loan, sorry, um, I think it could hurt the prices of players because no one's actually holding them then. Like if nobody's holding them, them out. and you can't use them because nobody's got them. No, if people, I mean, them. people own them already, but, but like if everyone keeps loaning, but why would, know. why would you loan out a triple A pick score? Cause you don't have others to accompany that card maybe. So you have one guy with an amazing matchup and then you have three who aren't that great and one mediocre one, like, then it makes sense yeah. to loan that card out. Cause if you're like, okay, then. I don't need this guy this game week. Let me loan him out. And then someone else goes and just loans out five AAA pick but, scores. But the, and, the alternative you know. is random Joe joins next week, needs one player, gets the game week close, pays 300% over the normal market price for him just to fill that spot. Then he's like, oh crap, now he's worth way, way, way less. Screw this game. I'm out. That's surely worse than I paid like three dollars to loan this card. That was really successful, and and even more, you can assign a, a like a percentage that SoRare take as well to influence future opportunities, like you know more rewards, more ETH threshold payouts, and I don't know. Again, it's I not something I've deeply explored. I'm sure there's a lot of holes in it, but I I, I do think it could be something fun, like. I think the two biggest changes they could make to the market that I think would be <clears throat> literally like revolutionary at this point is some type of like regulated loan market. Like I think it, the loaning rules right now are so gray that I think people are now actually not doing it because they don't really have any idea what's going to happen. But like it definitely used to be a thing. And the rules have not changed since people started loaning, but like one person gets caught, like caught some, whatever that meant. And so everyone's like, oh, maybe I won't do it. But I think at some point it, it happens and just the ability to sell more than one card at once, which is what we went back to before of like buy my collection, but not even that, like I want to sell basically a lineup for this week. I have five AAA cards that can play this game week. But I, but I have better ones that I can play in All-Star Rare. Buy these five together and good luck. Yeah. That's I fun. think people would go crazy. In a good way like or a bad they, way? A, lot, a bad way, I think. Yeah. People I, don't I, like I, change. And that's also, a huge change. I, I don't agree with Genie there that it doesn't create new money because it actually... I would start buying second, third, fourth, tenth versions of cards that I thought were very good that I could then loan out and get uh, over 100% return on investment 
over time by loaning these cards out, I'm putting new money into the ecosystem to, to own those cards. It, like, it's not like they don't get bought if they get loaned. I understand like the the perception that if you could just loan that card, you're not going to buy a card. Therefore, Solar loses out on you buying that card. But how many people actually just don't buy a lineup that week instead? And you know what I mean? Like, so they're still not putting new money in there and then also not having the card. It's the same as not putting money in there and then having the card that is then used in an internal ecosystem. Because I think that a lot of what happens in SoRare is the same money moving around, right? It's a domino effect. You sell your card, then you go buy a card, then you go buy a card. It's not that somebody put something new in. So if you could loan a card, that guy now has a benefit in kind. I now win a reward because of the loan card. I now have a benefit in kind and we both start spending that money in the ecosystem. I don't see how that's a negative from just nothing happening from that exchange. Yeah. Somebody made a comment before, like, why would you buy, I think it was uh bouncy here. Why, why would, would I buy, buy Armani loan? Off auction when I can just get it loaned? Like, isn't the point that you can buy the Armani and then loan it? Like you can lend the card yeah. out. Yeah. And get a benefit from that. Like, there's definitely benefits to owning the card that is being lent, not just getting the loan yeah. in order to get a lineup. I'm just a bit worried that, like, the game as it is is kind of great right now. Like, all agree, the changes yeah. they have brought in, everything is so good right now. Like, I can't remember a bad update that Sora has brought that people that people were upset about. Like, we had a streak of weeks possibly months where everyone was complaining about everything that they were doing. And then now things are like slowly getting every update. People are like, Oh, okay. Hmm, this is nice. Okay. This is good. Yeah. We're going into the right direction. Oh, my value is going up. Oh yes. Let's go next season. <laughs> let's do it. Like I, I, I'm very worried about stuff like that. I, I, I think it's a huge change. And another thing that I think Soria could possibly do, which would be a huge change is like being able to auction off your cards as well. So, like, if I know I put this card on the market, it will be gone. The question is for how much? Especially they used to do for, that. like, yeah. It, oh, really? Like, very early on, users could, like, before I joined, that you could auction your cards. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know why it stopped. I'll have to ask. <clears throat> I'll ask Andy, because Andy was around back then. I, 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 I think we, we, don't need, uh, we, don't, we don't need, like, degrees to understand why it stopped, right? If you auction your card, why would they buy SoRare's card? Whereas if you can't because auction your first cards, owner, first like, owner, collection right, bonus, that now, come on. But just in, in general, right? Like if we're able to auction our cards, there's more competition than for auction cards. SoRare don't make as much money. Yeah, I guess so. I think, well, it's, it's the same. It's the same. I mean, it would have to be a fee, right? Competing. It's still the secondary market. It's just how you're deciding to sell your card. Maybe like auctions have a 10% fee instead of 5%. Like in some way, sorry, I will find a way to profit off of it for sure. <laughs> They're very good at it. Yeah, so it's a business. That's all they have to. Man. They're just, just robbing us blind, <laughs> aren't they? At the yeah. end of the day, it's a business and they have to. And I hope they do well because I love the game. And when you were talking about like winning Sora, what is it for you now? Like for me, at first, I was like of the same thought. Like I want to have my gallery be worth at least as much as I've put in or even get the same amount back and play for free, basically. But at this point, I'm just like, I'm loving this game so much. I just hope it doesn't die. And I just hope my card's value doesn't go to zero. That's all yeah. it is. And I just hope I can play this forever. <laughs> I, I, I agree with that to a degree. But Led, when speaking to Maxime, was talking about people now who won't be able to, uh, like, have, like, won't be able to win their way to, like, like retirement effectively and you're wrong and i will do it right like I, I i may still invest here and there but i will have a 1000 ETH gallery in the next like eight to ten years pending no so rare beat crash and i will become the greatest most successful so rare manager of all time i don't think that's possible because I'm, it will probably be worth a lot more. I think ETH will be worth a lot more. If you tell me like a fiat number, I'll be like, yeah, sure. But like, I think ETH is going to be worth a lot more. Yeah, a million dollars then. So. I'll have a million yeah, dollar gallery. 
Yeah, I will. That's, that's, I, I believe in that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a thousand say, ETH. <laughs> I hope this didn't lead to like a one dollar ETH, and like that's why you have a thousand ETH gallery. <laughs> Possible. Yeah. See, and, and I, I know you genuinely believe that, Anzo, but you are wrong. I will do it. I will do it. Um, YNWA is here saying that I am wrong. That they have. There's never been an option. An option to auction players. So I'm yeah. guessing he would know. He seems yeah. like one person who might know. <laughs> yeah, one of the, the first, first ten managers, I believe. Right when I, when I spoke to him a couple of years ago, I believe ago. he was number one. Oh, really? Oh, amazing. But don't go. worry, Nando's not going anywhere. Yeah, see, yeah, Nando. This is what Nando does yeah. for his retirement. Uh, no, no, yeah, perfect. Nando, was you in my stream the other night when I was talking about a player? Did you buy him? I thought maybe you just don't have a Twitch thing or something. Otherwise, it's like an uncanny coincidence. I was scouting a guy, and then like three people from the stream bought him, and your name was one of them. And I thought with a gallery your size, and in twenty quid on a rare card, didn't seem. It seemed too much of a coincidence for you to not be in the stream, like for a card like that. Because if you do watch the content, first of all, thank you. I appreciate that. Second of all, <laughs> you'll get to see the journey of me becoming the greatest so rare manager of all time. A million dollar gallery. As I say, I might invest a little bit more here or there just to buy pieces that make sense, but I'll get there. Why do you think a million dollars makes you the best so rare manager? Because who else has taken a gallery from? my value in oh okay, the current okay. Economic from your gallery million million. Dollars. yeah I yeah yeah i mean obviously i could just invest a million dollars yeah i was gonna say just yeah. put it in hey, I get it. <laughs> yeah, <literally. laughs> no i i i have like i have genuine belief like like of obviously it borderlines like delusional arrogance right but genuine belief that i can learn like like this is why i like, like theory crafting so much because there will be the golden goose formula Right. And I think at this moment in time, the Golden Goose formula is investing an intense amount of money, buying good players, winning lots of rewards, cashing that out, and then finding a way to like uninvest that intense amount of money without taking a massive, massive haircut on it. Right. Like when you look at like You'll Never Walk Alone or Nanzo or PSU Van. Surface like, is one of those. I think Surface yeah, has done that. Yeah. Surface just like the, the, like these guys make so much off of rewards. And they are the they are the like the exception rather than rule. And so the the one way you get there is like either you're an early investor, an early adopter, and you've rode that wave up, which is great, or you do a pranksy or what's the guy right now that buys everything? Flow state. Flow state. Yeah, flow state. And you just you just you just invest you just buy you just buy money at that point, right? You just buy money. And so long as SoRare stays like frugal, brilliant. I believe that I will find the formula to winning so consistently that I snowball so dramatically that I will have one of the biggest galleries without too, too much investment. I believe it's possible. I just haven't figured it out yet. Skazmo brought up Luca Magic, who I believe started, if I remember the, the tale, Luca Magic started with 25 euros on the platform and currently has an 85 ETH gallery. I think a lot of that was trading, though, not necessarily winning. And maybe I'll buy that Moose Lara super rare while we're at it. Anyway, um, <clears throat> YNWA says Tom C is the benchmark. I don't know Tom C how Tom C started, but I have talked to Tom C, and he's great. Yeah. Um, oh. He's at, oh, he's at $994,000. Uh, oh, I'm going to beat him there. Just wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do think kind of what, how did you describe it? Um, some sort of arrogance. What did you Delusional describe? arrogance. Delusional arrogance. Yeah. Uh, so I remember one of your, for, not my, one of my, your first, but an early like so rare stream that you did where you were talking about winning like the casual league and like going like a classic road to glory. And it was like, I don't think winning the casual league is as easy as he's making it sound. But you were really convinced you were going to just I, win it. I, I, like, I, I think Every week. I, I think I finished 20th that was the highest. But again, it was one of those things where it's like, like and, and he, uh, I've, I've literally, I think the last time we spoke, Led, on the podcast, I mentioned this. Like, the greatest thing about So Rare is that there is a clear path to success. But the worst thing is that it just takes too long, right? Yeah. And it's the same with the casual yeah. league. 
if they if they maintained the casual league as it was, I would have one hundred percent won it because my XP. I w- I would have made sure like the XP on the players was always correct. Because did you put limited into training back then? You could, couldn't you? Sorry, uh, comments comments. In training. Yes, comments. Yeah. yeah. So like it like it's inevitable that somebody who plays so rare as much as we do, as people in this chat do, that that you will eventually get that five that makes sense. And that might be obviously because of the way the rewards work. Like once you start getting those stars, although back then it was always goalkeepers, so you almost wanted a tier one instead. But once you got that PSG stack or that Real Madrid stack and then they played bottom of the table, you was winning it because nobody else had those players. It, it, was, a, it was a matter of time before you had the best possible team academy and so i still believe that i would have won it eventually yeah so we've gone pretty long do you guys oh it's only been an hour and 20 minutes i was gonna say you you've got 12 hours of his stream (laughs) yeah (laughs) this this is a problem with sorrow though right i like i could genuinely talk about it all day i and it's another one of the reasons why i don't get further in my so rare journey to a million dollar gallery because I just talk too much instead of acting on what I'm saying, right? I was talking to my wife about it yesterday and she's like, how do you have something to talk about every day? And I'm like, I only do an hour a day. You should see this guy. Yeah, <laughs> he's on for 12 hours a day. But anyway, Joe brought up this, this interesting point, which I think everyone who uses gallery value as a goal needs to consider. And you seem to be going the other way. And he said, I think gallery trading is probably faster for growing value, but way less fun. It is absolutely way less fun. Yeah. But I do think it is a faster path to yeah. thousand ETH. So it's for smart people who don't like football. Yeah. I, I mean, I've, <laughs> like, I've, just, I've, 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 that. I've toyed with the idea a lot of starting to like, buy galleries, like putting 10 ETH aside, buying galleries, selling all of it to Pavel and hopefully making a profit. Um, and yeah, like, it's it's just not as fun as winning a rare Mbappe that then you use to win another rare Mbappe, and, you know, and so on and so forth, or like, like the equivalent of. Um, I, I've, yeah, I, I I think it, I think it is possible, plausible, and doable. Not at the scale of trading. Trading would just be way 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 quicker. Whether that's buying galleries or just flipping cards. But if push comes to shove, and I'm not there in like five years. I am just going to start recommending players on stream and have like a hundred of them in the bank and then just sell them all off and do it that way. It's fine. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to ask to be on Nellis your show every week. Let me just pump a few more players, please. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, just on a quick That's when everything goes to zero, by the way. Yeah, it is. (laughs) Because Net was saying like, buy a player to win that same player i just wonder do you guys have like that holy grail player in your head that you would love to win instead of buying him because i've been purposely not buying an mbappe because i want to win that card that's that's the only one for me like that's we um i think it was with andy like that's always the that's always the goal yeah like right. every and obviously we play in a way that doesn't like you don't play challenger limited in order to win an Mbappe super rare, but you can use what you win there to make the rest of your gallery better. Like I, at this point, I think the Mbappe super rare is that's how you win. Mm. Like that's the best thing that you can win in this game. Cause I don't think they're going to give an Mbappe. Like, I don't know what the best unique that they'll reward is, but like from week to week, the Mbappe super rare and I remember AJ won one during the Global Cup. And he was like, I felt like I won so rare. Because I, I don't think you can win anything else where you're like, this is, the, this is it. This is the best card I can win. Because there's always an Mbappe super rare. And Skazma saying the Carlos Hill unique, which was a reward. Yes. Oh, but, was it? Wow. Yeah, it, uh, it was like a, the Golden 270. For Golden oh. 270 unique, one Carlos Hill unique. Wow. And something, and a ridiculous super rare. Um, But it's Mbappe. Like, I think it, it, like today, as of today, it's Mbappe. Maybe another player, maybe become somebody else. But, but, so, so, but why Mbappe? Like, why is he the most sought after slash expensive player on the platform? 
because I think he has the clearest path to being the greatest player in the world. Right. Unless now. he goes to Saudi. Mbappe? I mean, hey, yeah, they're buying yeah, everyone. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's why. I think because you can go you can go anywhere and somebody and you're like, do you know who Kylian Mbappe is? And people are like, yeah. He's that soccer. You can be like, well, I want his super rare picture on a website. So I yeah. want his blue picture. <laughs> yeah, I want this blue picture, JPEG. <laughs> you should really appreciate me more than you do. I think yeah. it's just generally a, a mental thing, like of just seeing at the top of the price pool, it's him and he has always been there. And you think of him, if you think of first place, you think of Mbappe, if he's eligible for that division, obviously. Um, but like, that's always been like the holy grail that you try and win. Yeah, for, 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 At me, least it's, for me, it's, I don't, like, obviously I'm, I wouldn't be sad if I won Mbappe. I would love to win Mbappe. But I think I mentioned to you the other day, Led, like my, my holy grail moment is going to be winning rewards with rewards to the point where my whole gallery is rewards. And of course it'd be necessary for that. But winning just a genuine usable piece is always more valuable to me in terms of that long goal than winning something that is perceived to be like the best player. Because that like, not that I think about it too deeply. I don't like win a goalkeeper and think like, let's go, man. Like I've got an SO5 piece now. I don't I like, I don't really care like that deep. Um, but when it's like a top piece and I was actually looking at the Bruno Fernandez that I won before that I traded out for the Julian Gressel super rare. And I, I just wish I kept that Bruno because that's a reward that would have won me a whole, whole, whole bunch of rewards. And I made a mistake selling that. And that's lesson learned. I won't do that again. So when I win yeah. Bruno later on this week, I'll keep him this time. I, I like that feeling too. I I just checked. I have like zero actual usable rewards in my gallery. <laughs> like none of them. They're all gone, either traded for players who I wanted. But it, it, initially, like the thought of having a first owner team that wins um, just... Yeah, that's that's definitely one of those holy grail type moments for sure. But it's not even first owner, right? It's reward. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean reward. Yeah, obviously. Well, I only in like that FIFA because... aspect, we we call it first owner. Yeah. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I only because I give Sean a hard time, which in fairness, so rare started this. But if you look at like a, the card page of any player on so rare. It'll show if somebody won an auction and they, they say like one buy. Yeah. And it's like that's a weird. That's a weird one. And he, he won some auction recently and he was like, uh, I forget who it was. He, he bought the unique of the player and he had a super rare of him already. And he was like, I don't want the super rare anymore. And he's like, I just won the unique. So if anybody wants the super rare and I was like, where did you win that? <laughs> and he was like, well, I just, it was an auction. And I'm like, oh, so you just paid more than everybody else. Like you didn't win anything. <laughs> so rare one. <laughs> but I don't even know why I brought that up. Um, oh, because of rewards. Like you want rewards, the lineup of rewards. See, look at that from Nanzo. That's the nice dream, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Who Super. did you win? Who did you win? Uh, that, now I want to know. He's already forgotten because he wins so often. That he's <laughs> <clears throat> so YNWA, I like this question. Would you rather win an experience or an Mbappe Super Rare? So, so, so for me personally, uh, based because of what I get to do for a living, I kind of, I've had the privilege of being able to have those experiences without having to win them. And so Mbappe Super Air would definitely trump that because I just feel like if, if I really wanted the experience, I could just be like, hey, can I come please? And that'd be that. <laughs> like, I legit yeah. love the game so much that like, I couldn't care what experience they give me. Like nothing beats that card for me. Like you could offer me to go to, I don't know, the entire campaign of Liverpool when they when they're back in the Champions League and I get to watch every single game. I'd still take the Mbappe Super Air. Because like he, he changes I don't, everything. I don't, I don't know. If if that was an off offer, I'm thinking of like single single game experiences and stuff. Which money for Mbappe Super Air. Really? I, wait, wait yeah. Chatty. Earlier on in earlier on in the uh, podcast, one of the things that you noted was about like like ex like life experiences and and experiences. Yeah. 
and now you're willing to forego that. Yeah, but for... the experience of having <laughs> yeah. in super rare Mbappe is also an experience. <laughs> See, did, did it with the Arsenal team in a training session with Arsenal? Like, like honestly, I I I don't care. I don't like it. Just that wouldn't mean more to me than the value and the benefits that you'd get from having super rare Mbappe. But like, if I was offered like you know, box seat tickets to every Arsenal game for the entirety of next year. That would be far, far, far more valuable to me, not only because of the experiences themselves, but the content I could make off of that would generate enough income to buy Super Aaron Mbappe. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, if you think about it like just that. just play yeah. left back for Arsenal for the season. What is that? <laughs> yeah, that'd be great, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah, sign me up. <laughs> Put me on a smart contract, it'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Just pay him a bunch of ETH. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the I think the experiences are really cool, but I think that there are enough people who are just like, no, I would just rather the card. And or just stay home. Like a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some people just yeah. The fact that so many of these experiences require leaving the house. I'm not sure everybody <laughs> wants these yeah, Where is PSU? He got locked in the bathroom. He doesn't know how to work the uh the door handle. So <clears throat> yeah, he got stuck. Just give me a vision pro, put me in the stadium, like somewhere up front. You so, know, so, that's like, going to happen sometime in the future. We are going like way off topic here, I guess. But that, have you seen like the Man City, like virtual reality stadium no. that they built? It like, it looks incredible. And really? the idea is that you'll actually, whilst the game's been played, you'll be able to like walk around the pitch, and, like oh. follow who's got the ball and like go into the stadiums if you want and like, go into the dressing room when they're sitting there having a dressing room. And, and and it's part of this whole, like, this Web3, like, like the metaverse is part of, like, all of that kind of kind of thing. And it's, like, it kind of is, like, a little bit like a, like, why would you want to do that? But also, it's like, that would be so cool. Yeah. Like, if you was able to attend every single Arsenal game in that manner and just, like, sit on the goalpost and watch the goal, the game <laughs> yeah. from there. Like, that'd be crazy. And it will probably happen. But, like, that will be possible at some point. Surely, right? Yeah, I think they have that NBA thing that they showed where you can, like, have the game on your table <laughs> and, right. like, see it in real time. That just looked insane to me. Imagine having that, like, in your living room. You just sat there. You're looking at, at the floor, and there's Messi just running around. And, and and instead, what pops up is your SO5 team. And then on each card, on the reverse of the card, as you flip it over, it's just tracking them in the game. So you just get to see all of their game, their 90 minutes of just them. That'd be amazing. Incredible. Yeah, I do realize I went way off on a tangent there. I was just, it was just okay. there. I hear no, one with last super rare and bollard rare. L Les, like, reading emails at this point. He's like, yeah, we... No, no, no. I was... Uh... <laughs> Not at all. I was trying to do something though. Yeah, close Google real quick before you. Uh, Didn't work. We see your what emails. Was those, what was the the Nanzo prize? Courtois. Courtois super rare. Oh, oh, there you go. And ball out rare. See now, and and again, see this is this is what I love because Nanzo, like, what have you also then won with Courtois? Like, it's that in like it is incestuous, but incestuous reward winning of like I won this reward and this was good enough to then win me these rewards which then and it's like it's, it's the perfect it's perfect isn't it it is genuinely perfect it's, there we go it we're is. off topic lads let's go yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought oh, about shit. doing that from the start to be honest <laughs> so I was like I'm not going to be able to just talk about this for these guys no chance that's a more that was a me issue than you guys so don't worry about it um, <clears throat> yeah I don't I think that was my that's what I keep thinking of like what actual experience would be better than the Mbappe. And I realize I'm in a little different situation that I can't just be like, hey, I'd like to go to <laughs> Arsenal this week and just go. So maybe that maybe it is a little different. But an Mbappe super would be nice to have. It would be. Yeah. Hmm. Well now that we're off topic, what else do you guys want to talk about? Uh what product developing? Oh man, I actually have a list for you, Led not to hand now it's in a book in the other room of things I need on so rare data. Um, and, and one of the most 
I was going to say, I know about a lot of them anyway. So, Like, like uh, may, maybe you heard me talk about this. I don't know. You said you didn't watch yesterday's stream. But, like, we need a way to denote whether a card is in a collection yeah, yeah. or not from the market. Yeah, like, that would be... Uh, that that was, like, the top of the list at the moment, to be fair, because I'm now, like, this collection guy. That, like, that's all, all I care about on so rare. So <laughs> it's just my priority number one. <laughs> Um, oh, actually, one one, one thing. I'm this collection um, guy is <laughs> such a great one. <laughs> one thing that I would really care for, but maybe a lot of people wouldn't, is when I click on a player and go to SO5, no, not SO5 scores. SO5 you want to the, you wanna go to the gallery. I just want to see all the lineups they were in. Because I want to oh, be able to... Oh, like, yes. Yeah, I want to I want to be able to like look at the different like permutations of lineups i had them in which ones were more successful and less successful and again like just develop strategy and and, and just like it's just like fun to be like oh yeah i didn't win it like because some i've got some really good cards but i just haven't won much with and they're not the reason why i didn't win rewards because they're good cards so why didn't i was it the tournament i placed them in was it the team that i had around them like yeah that like and and that's really hard to like see visually on survey data yeah. quick yeah, I think the it's something I actually already suggested. I think Vitaly is, or whoever is on it, is working on it already, right? Oh, really? Amazing. Yeah, I hope so. Well, so, so he's actually in the streams quite a lot these days. I, have, so I see him talk now. I so. had not, not to like give away who is in charge of that stuff, but I've had a conversation specifically about that within the last few days. Okay, amazing. So, Ew. yeah, lovely. Yeah, there you go. Um, that's the list. That's it. Uh, as I said, I, I, I was sat there the other night in the other room whilst Lauren, well, we were watching Love Island and I, I like, I quite enjoy Love Island. I don't know if you watch Love Island, but uh, it's like, you know, a whole bunch of like really attractive people get put into a villa and whatever happens, happens. Sure. But like, this is like my fourth season of watching it with Lauren now. And it's basically the exact same conversations with just different humans saying them. And so it wears off. It's like, where's your head at? Like, oh, you, like you're interested in that? Because I'm trying to keep myself open this time. And so I started like writing things down, sort of what I wanted on Sarah Data. Whilst we were there. <laughs> then we started watching <laughs> the one percent. Now that is fascinating. Have you watched the one percent? No, no. So it's a game show, right? And the, like, there's a, I guess, a hundred people in the game show. And the first question is like, ninety percent of the British population got this question correct. And it's just a, you know. A question like what the difference in these four pictures and stuff and this is i'd really like to be able to answer the one percent question makes me feel smart but you only get like one like if you get the question wrong you're out or once you get to a certain stage you could like forfeit your thousand pounds reward so like pass if you don't know the question and so if i get out before you get to the one percent question and i think okay i wouldn't have actually got to this question and then i get it right i'm just like genuinely upset with myself because it means I got like a really difficult question right, but couldn't answer what most of the general public could answer. And yeah, <laughs> that's uh, yes. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Judy. There you go. One percent is great. So, would you rather be on and win the one percent show or win an yeah, Mbappe super rare? Hundred percent one percent show because oh. the, like you can win you like the prize pot's usually like ninety odd thousand pounds. So oh, so go and buy and buy uh, super rare with okay. the money. Yeah. That made sense. You just go, <laughs> go and buy two super rare Mbappes. Right, exactly. Yeah, I, I'd go and buy a whole tree of Mbappes. I'd, I'd go and get like ten rares. Who was ah? Oh, I was like looking at somebody's gallery yesterday. It might have been. Was it you'll never walk alone? I, I can't remember who it was. And they like every lineup was like super Mbappe, rare Mbappe, super Mbappe, rare Mbappe, rare Mbappe. And I'm like, God damn! Like, give us somebody else a chance. You know, like, <laughs> what hope have you got when they already own them? And then, like, imagine now, like, you need an Mbappe for your PSG collection to get your Neymar at Chelsea on 5%. And Mbappe is the last guy left. Like, not only is it bad enough that you need to spend, like, four grand on Mbappe, you, this guy now knows you need him for the collection. So it's going to be even worse. And he's holding all of them. So we've got Mbappe Super Rare versus the So Rare experience of winning All-Star Rare and appearing on the 1% show. Would I rather win All Star Rare and appear on the One Percent Show? Yeah, you're just appearing. You're not winning. Yeah, I would rather like. But I win All Star Rare. Yeah, yeah. I'll take I'll take winning All Star Rare and appearing on the One Percent Show. Wow. 
be, be, because not everybody wins Kimmich. Just run good Sean Newsham wins yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I, like I'll probably win Mbappe to be fair. Um, but uh, no, it, it, like is that one of those affiliate deals? Yeah. This yeah. Affiliate deal? yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I just need like three yeah. more people to sign up, and then that's it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I, I, I like. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I wouldn't. But in in my current like mental state, because I'm watching the one percent with Lauren most nights, I I think I would get more satisfaction out of proving I'm smarter than the other people in that room than winning a picture of Mbappe. Yeah, it's a blue picture. Yeah. <laughs> it is blue. Yeah, that yeah, does make that does make a little bit of a difference. But I also get the All Star rare. Like, what? What's all star rare ETH prize at the moment? Like point six or something? Zero point eight, I think. One eight. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I'm not too sure. So last week's all star rare just play, it was tier one for first place. Couldn't even win Mbappe. Tough, isn't it? Mm. Roman Berkey nice. for whoever got him. Nice. Is it? Is it? That's nice? well. Mm. Mm. I think he is. I think Black would be very happy, right? If you won Roman Berkey, like you you win All Star Rare, and that's what you win. What are we thinking? I'm fuming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you. And Nep is like, well, I probably if I won one, then I'll probably win four others, and so it no, no. Well, work. my thought was going like, if I won Roman Berkey, I would actually probably buy a stack, even though I wouldn't be able to complete with Black. The yeah. St. Louis home games like are just real strong. So like there's there's a lot of potential there to, to win good rewards. But but knowing his collection, you will never win. That's not true. It's not, it's not. Because there will be a time where we will both have exactly the same XP. And then the differential will be the players you pick. So if we pick the same five, we will both finish on exactly the same points. But he would have the same collect. He would have the higher collection bonus. No, we could both have five percent collection bonus and ten oh, percent XP, yeah. right? So he, I love that he you would win. You win All Star Rare. You win Roman Burton, <laughs> and then throw three more ETH in just to get the collection bonus, and then wait three years so that we both got fifteen like percent just to beat Andy Black in uh, yeah America Rare. It's, it's the all dream. Worth that, it. is, that is That's the dream. The dream. <laughs> That's the dream. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's the dream. So about winning, I had just had one thought because I remember you and me fell into the trap of Quinny uh, talking about Marseille. Um, I was just wondering, if you guys could pick one team that you could stack for the next season, which one would it be? An Etienne. Okay. How many Dennis Apayas do you own? I think six at the moment. Yeah. yeah. The unique has been on the market recently. Yeah. Don't I'm ask not, me. I'm not going anywhere that. near that. Yeah. Uh, he, not he's, going uh, uh, but and Etienne, they're, they're like, from what I learned in the second division Europe last year, the French league is just the, the quality of football from those lower teams is genuinely abysmal. And Etienne, we're in the relegation zone uh, after the World Cup. New manager, lots of new good signings. Like, I think they're going to be favourites to get promoted next season with a few more signings they've got proposed coming in. So, yeah, I, th I think they could they could do some serious, serious work. Like, like this year, if you picked one team in hindsight, you probably wouldn't pick PSG or Bayern or Real Madrid. Maybe you'd go Barcelona, but they probably don't score enough goals. They'd got probably go Burnley. Chains. You would probably pick a second division team if you yeah. was picking in hindsight. Gross. Yeah. Who would you go for late? Arsenal. For next yeah, season? Five. Yeah, let's just have some, some fun, man. Although no, I said, you, you... who do you think is going to be one of the you most... You said, who would I want to play? Wasn't that who, the question? Who... I mean, like, who do you think is going to be, like, one of the best stacks to have for the next season? Arsenal. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. I just got to play to my, my original guest. That's all. <laughs> I think for me, for me... 
for me it's quite easy because like the Bundesliga has lost so many big traditional clubs and the clubs coming up are not necessarily going to be able to compete on a high level and Bayern is probably going to steamroll through yeah. teams next season. I think Bayern is the easiest choice. Um, the Prem is just too like too competitive. Even City stacks are probably going to have a couple of weeks where they just won't be able to compete. All right, so but note in a diary, 11 months from now, we're going to look back and see yes. which stack Arsenal, Bayern, or St. Etienne would have won more awards in All-Star Rare. Yeah. All right. Okay. And we'll put on the line one player from each club between us right now. How about that? I'll go Dennis Apaya. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> can afford one of your six. I'm not sure I even have... Oh, no, I do have an Arsenal player. He's not an Arsenal kit, though. I'll build up my collection to be able to give one away. Yeah. So far, I'm only two cards, and I'm not giving away my golden boy, that's for sure. <laughs> See, now, didn't you overpay for that? Card, Jenny, the Musiala. No, because I, like after I got him, some Musiala's price just kept going up. So I oh, actually wow. got it for a reasonable price, I think. Um, but was... doesn't it show like I know that we might be getting the Sereris, but doesn't it show like cards? Yeah. He like, had like card eight type. cards above. Oh my wow. buy. That's awesome. yeah, it's insane. So many... I, I would I would go out of my way to buy special cards from Arsenal. Hmm. Not How many bonus of those cards did he have? Was it just one? Sorry, the golden boy cards? Like how many uh, golden four. boy cards? I think he had four. Yeah. But like most of them are with accounts that probably will never let him go. From what I could tell, like it's some big like name your... accounts, if I'm not mistaken. No, literally one. The first one I pull up is by gallery named selling my cards. Really? <laughs> <laughs> let me see. He's got a 10th gallery, including a Musiala. Oh, yeah, he does. Uh, he probably oh, he's got Jude his name. also. Well, can't wait for those cards to land in Pavel's gallery. I'll be ready yeah. for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, now, now that we've got collection bonus itself, what about in SO5 terms, and this may be only specific tournaments or whatever, because it might ruin the ecosystem of SO5, but what about individual cards having a bonus that only that card has? So like a Golden Boy card comes with like a 1% XP bonus that no other Musiala card would have. Because they've already opened up the door to like discrepancies between fairness of XP, yeah. right? So I think if you overcomplicated too much the gameplay itself, it becomes unenjoyable. So I'm really hoping that they don't, don't go too far with it. But at the same time, with cards like that, that only come by like once a year, maybe a bonus would be cool. I mean, I'm selfishly saying that. Right, right, but have. at the same time, the Golden Boy cards, you get 5%. For, for the one I have, sure, give me a 10% bonus. But like, realistically but they, speaking, I don't think they'll do it. But they already kind of do. Like, they're, yeah, they're exactly, so like, important for the collection bonus that like... Just that they, well, I actually, I suppose, that? actually, with a situation like that, he would give, even if it was the only card in the collection, it would be 1%, wouldn't it? So, exactly. Okay, yeah. I, uh, yeah. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Good job, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the so the tricky one is that, so I'm looking at this collection of the sell your gallery, sell my gallery person. So they have mm -hmm. the Musiala 17 of 100, which is a golden boy, and then they have an Uba Meccano rare. Like, Uba Meccano gets 1% also, just mm -hmm. for being in that collection. But, oh, I guess Musiala is only worth 60 points because it's not a serial, it's not a number one or a jersey man. So actually that one will not, wouldn't have gotten 1% on its own. Is it 1%? 35, 35 points. points. Yeah. Is it, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. <clears throat> sorry. I was looking at Basically any card that you're first owner of and haven't listed gets 1%. Yeah. So, yeah. We, we had the point on stream yesterday of, even though it technically has transferred and been listed by so rare, should a card bought off the auction house immediately have the hasn't been listed for 90 days points? You don't think it should? I think it should. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I think it's a bit of a gray area. Say, I think say with the rewards, fine. right? Because, it, okay, it got traded, but because you won it, not because somebody sold it to you. So therefore, if you 
have that, you should immediately get that. Look, I haven't sold or listed this in 90 days. I think a reward, if you get the reward, I'm fine. If you buy it off the auction market, I don't think it should have it. I know it's weird, but it just makes sense in my head. I'm cool with it being a reward doing it, I think. I would do it for the reward before the auction. If you yeah. win an auction. <clears throat> <laughs> win an auction. Oh. There you go. All right, unfortunately, I'm going to have to head off now. It's 10 to 6. Or oh, for any you're the one making a stop. Good. Yeah, it's not I me. am. Perfect. <laughs> you did tell me that. You're right. I, I honestly could have carried on going forever, but... These FIFA calls. We have tomorrow. Can, yeah. so. <laughs> you'll be you'll yeah. be streaming twelve hours tomorrow. I will indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. Thank you everybody for joining us. If you guys haven't hit the like button on the video, please do so. Subscribe to the channel. Nap Chani. I first off, I cannot believe how quickly you ruined that surprise. No. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. I I didn't. Maybe I didn't think it through enough that I was like, he's obviously. I, I didn't even have you guess. You were just like, oh, is it Chani? Like, yeah. <laughs> That's Johnny. But anyway, Nep, thank you. Chani, thank you. I know you're uh, going to take a little time away. So uh, enjoy that time away while we're stuck inside trying to win Mbappe Super Airs. And Probably be on the beach looking at Sora data. How, yeah. how about this? If this video gets more likes than any other Sora strategy show ever before, ESU fans is out and Nep is in. <laughs> I reckon that's fair. <laughs> I think that's fair. You're right. Absolutely fair. And uh, I'll be sure to tweet it. Well, hold on, let me let me get the design back here. Let's say that just say that again one more time, so I have the strategy show background. Yeah. So if this yeah, please, uh, one more if time. this Sora data strategy show gets more likes than anyone ever before, ESU fans is out. A Panthers is in. It's permanent co-host. There you go. Make it happen, people. Thank you, gentlemen, and uh, good luck this week.